introduce to you Delegate Susan Kress. Thank you, Michelle. I've been in front of this group, I think, many, many times since the very beginning, and I'm not sure how many of you have been originals. How many years have you been doing this? Five. So I've been here since the very beginning, but a lot of you have changed. So very quickly, I'll tell you about my background. I grew up in Baltimore County, and I've lived in Carroll County for 30 years now. I live in Eldersburg. I have three children, and I am an accountant and advisor to small business. I did it for 20 years until I got involved in the General Assembly, and it's hard to be an accountant during uh, tax season when you're down in Annapolis. So I now do this full time, and I love it. And I love my colleagues that I work with, Delegate Stocksdale and Delegate Reedy and, and Delegate Elliott. We work very, very well together. Um, I started, I guess I was very active in my community years ago, and I ran for the school board. And I was like Commissioner Frazier, never thought I'd be involved in politics. And I got on the school board because we were having some issues, and we have some great candidates here tonight that are going to be running for school board. And it's very exciting because you can do a lot on the school board as one of five. So I offer my help to those candidates to try to give them any information they could, they could use. After that, in 2002, they did some redistricting, and I actually, Senator Getty is the one that, he was Delegate Getty at the time, called me up and said, Susan, why don't you run for this new district in South Carroll? Never thought about it, never considered it. The next thing you know, I had signs up along the road, and I was running for the delegate in uh, District 9, which is now, as, as Eric said, we need to keep a Carroll County resident in District 9, District 9, so please keep that in mind. So I've been in the legislature for, for 12 years, and I would um, like to say I have a voting record of thousands, thousands of bills. And I can tell you, you're not going to agree with all of them. I look back and don't agree with all of them because they fly through. Um, we vote on probably six, 700 bills a year and multiply that times 12. We get about 3,000 bills a year, 2,500 bills a year. About seven, 800 of them come to us to vote on um, in, the, in the House. and. You don't always understand all of them. I do my homework. I think I'm very well respected for doing my homework. I have a very conservative voting record. I have, uh, I've been endorsed by the NRA, Right to Life, and I've had a 100% rating with the MBRG, which is Maryland Business for Responsive Government for my entire term in office. I have a perfect NRA rating and perfect pro-life rating. So I think my credentials are good. I also am a very uh, fiscally conservative person, but I also know we have to, do, we have to take care of business. I serve on the Health and Government Operations Committee, and we take care of all the health care issues which are huge today, as you know. We, I work very closely with uh, Andy Harris, Senator, uh, Congressman Harris. He was Senator Harris and now Congressman Harris. And being on the Health uh, Committee, uh, we are overseeing the Affordable Care Act. And I say that, um, take it with a grain of salt. There was a person that came to this meeting and accused the Carroll County delegation of voting for the Affordable Care Act, or Obamacare. And I just want to tell you, I, I assume the person did not read the legislation that we, that we uh, voted on, because I have never voted to do anything to push, pr progress the Affordable Care Act or Obamacare in any way, shape, or form. The legislation that was referred to is House Bill 166 that happened in 2011, and if the person who decided to ding us on this piece of legislation, had read it carefully. Our, uh, like Nancy Pelosi, who doesn't bother to read this stuff before they sign it or vote on it, this legislation was the implementation of the Affordable Care Act. It has the name, Maryland Health Benefit Exchange Act of 2011. Very voluminous in 2011. The, um, the Affordable Care Act was in front of the Supreme Court at the time, but the Republicans on the committee, the Health Committee, were able to get an amendment on this bill to make it into have, that would have to come back to the legislature the following year to be approved so we would buy time while it was in the Supreme Court. And the language says, the exchange has to report its findings and recommendations, including recommendations for legislative uh, necessary or desirable to carry out the purposes or functions back to the governor and to the General Assembly before it is implemented. We got that language in the bill, so this entire bill Okay, back to us the next year for implementation. Otherwise, it would have been an autopilot in 2011. So anyone that continues to say that the delegation voted for Obamacare, we did not. We slowed it down until the following year, which we voted against every year since then. So I just want to set the record straight. In elections, obviously, um, we have a voting record. We have a lot of people can pick on. So uh, I encourage you, with this election, we have seven people running in this uh, new three-member district. 
There are three incumbents, and as I said, they're very good. We work very hard. Connection on the speaker. Let me try to lose connection on the yeah, speaker. It's, oh. it's connected now. Oh, you got it? Okay, That's I don't it. understand. That's sorry, part of his job. I'm so sorry. <laughs> okay. Are we good? Can we I hear think, now? Yeah, I think we're good. If sorry. you can't hear it back there, let me know. Anyway, I said I serve on the Health and Government Operations Committee, and I also serve with Delegate Reedy and, and Delegate Elliott on this committee. We do everything regarding health care. As you know, the Affordable Care Act has been a disaster. Um, the, the rollout, the implementation has been a disaster. Hundreds of millions of dollars have been spent that are literally flushed down the toilet because we're now going to have to change to a new exchange. I've been uh, appointed to the Oversight Committee to look into this, and it is a huge issue. I've been in contact with, Sen I mean, keep calling him Senator, he was Senator, Congressman Harris. We've been very working very closely. He got the Office of Inspector General to come in. He's, they're going to do a, an audit from the federal government. We're also going to be doing an audit at the state government. But in the meantime, it is, it is truly... Um, the biggest boondoggle, I think, in the state of Maryland ever, and the amount of money that's been wasted is, 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 is awful. So I just wanted to mention that. It's, it's very, very, it's a large issue. You read about it all the time. Uh, I gave you some little cards um, with my home phone number and my email address and my website. Uh, I have got a lot of information on my website. If you ever have any questions about how we vote or what we do, please call us up. As incumbents, hey, we, we're, we've got a record. Um, and people that are running against us have no record. And what I ask people to do is look at what we've accomplished. Look at the things that we that we work for. This year, we work very closely with our county commissioners. And one of the issues, the big issues this year, has been the budget. And you'll have to forgive me, there's a lot of good stuff in our budgets. And there's a lot of not good stuff in our budgets. But the budget has grown at a billion dollars every year that Governor O'Malley has been in. This year, it was $1.6 billion. The budget has gone up 37% since he's been in office at a time when your wages have been stagnant. I could not, in good faith, vote for the budget. I don't care if anybody bangs on me, criticizes me. It's very difficult when it's your own senators that are calling you up and criticizing you publicly. And I am very sorry that the four of us, I'm not sorry, the four of us principally could not vote and do not vote for budgets that are out of control just to get a little crumb and uh, it, you know, it's for the children. And I uh, believe me, being on the Board of Education for many years, I know that our school district has needs. The county commissioner knows that they have needs, and they try to meet them. Our county has the fifth highest tax effort in the state of how much they give to our public schools. Now we have some challenges, and some of those challenges are because of growth. We've been losing enrollment, and we're losing enrollment because of our growth policies. Not ours, but the state-mandated growth policies that they put on our county. We can't build. We don't have water in our towns. Um, people are moving out of state because of our tax policy. So we're losing enrollment for the first time in 30 years since I've lived here. When I was on the school board, we built six new schools in four years because our enrollments were going up. And that was a very a growth a time of growth. Now we have a time of declining enrollments. For the last five years, we've lost students. And for the next five years, we're going to lose students. And unfortunately, the Board of Education made a very poor decision a few years ago, and people keep telling me not to bring it up. But they decided to move forward and build a high school for $80 million when our enrollments were going down and the need was not there. We are the only county in the state of Maryland who has ever built a high school without state funding, ever, in 40 years. That's as far back as they went. That school costs us $12 million a year. Eight million dollars in debt service, and Commissioner Fraser's great at nodding her head. Eight million dollars in debt service, four million dollars a year to operate it. And it's not the fault of the people there, and it's not the fault of the students, and the building is there. We can't take it back. But the county commissioners have had to fund that since its opening, and they're going to have to fund it until the debt is paid off in 15 years. And then at the very same time, Governor O'Malley decided to shift part of the pensions onto the counties. So the county commissioners, instead of the state paying for teacher pensions, they just said, hey, let's solve our problem by taking it over and giving it to the counties. So that's five to six million dollars a year in escalating that our county now has to spend on pension costs versus giving it to our schools or lowering more taxes. So there's been some decisions that have been made that some people have supported. I have not. We voted against that pension shift. Um, others in our party disagreed and they wanted the pension shift. So we have a difference of opinion and we, we talk about it, not personally, but we talk about the policy. 
So there are a number of big issues that have affected our school budget that we're now living with. And that is why it's important to have elected officials that know what they're doing and have experience. We have some people running that have no experience, but people want fresh perspective. Well, you can have a fresh perspective, but if you don't know what you're doing and you don't know what's going on and you make a bad vote, we got a lot of problems for a long time. And that's why we're in the situation we're in today, I believe. And our county commissioners today have to live with some of those decisions and pay for some of those decisions, and it's hurting everyone. So um, the budget, a couple of other reasons that we voted against the budget is because how many minutes? Yeah. Okay. One, I just want to say one more thing about the. It's <laughs> one more thing about pensions. Uh, our pension system in the state of Maryland has not been funded properly, and this year another big reason that we voted against the budget is because the governor and the Senate decided to take an additional four hundred million dollars over the next two years to not put in the pension and to spend it instead. I think that is fiscally irresponsible, and your grandchildren and our future taxpayers are going to foot the bill because that pension needs to be funded. And at the very same time, when they made that agreement to fund those pensions, they asked our state employees and our teachers to give more money. So our teachers are all foot the bill, our county commissioners are now footing part of that bill, but the state did not uphold their part of the obligation. I cannot vote for a budget that does that. So um, it's, a, it's a philosophical difference we have with our Senate colleagues that have been harassing us to vote for the budget, which they all did. And we just refuse to, and uh, we're not going to fall down on our principles for a small grain of sand in the budget for a million dollars for our school system. So that's um, that's who I am. If anybody has any questions, Five minutes, okay. is Anthony Brown, uh, Anthony Brown ever going to be tagged? Anthony Brown is his name ever? Lieutenant Governor was in charge of the rollout of the health exchange and when he cut the ribbon and he was all excited and we're going to be the first in the country to roll out our health exchange he has not been present at one of our meetings ever since it went bad he is out of sight and i think the audit that came out last week we had a meeting pretty much said there is no leadership in the exchange that's one of the problems they could not see clearly who was making the decisions they had not even tested the exchange before they opened it because it was not working before they, they couldn't test it. So he has not been present. Will he be held accountable? Obviously the leadership does not want these audits to come out. They can't get them finished by the primary. Their primary is in June. So I think you're going to find a delayed accountability mechanism. Yeah, but the, but there's pages, pages of articles over this, this failed system, but you never see the name of the realm associated well, we say the name every time we talk about it, but the, unfortunately the press does not want to print that. They, that's their favorite candidate, and we have a compliant press in uh, the state of Maryland, and that's a very difficult thing to overcome, but we always, in everything we say, say the about Mally Brown administration, because we want to make sure he is accountable. He would have taken the accolades if it all worked, and now that it's not working, he needs to accept responsibility. That's a very good way of putting it, Yes, sir. What's your opinion on the illegals? and boys and girls at school have to use the same bathroom. Oh, two tough subjects, illegals and boys and girls. <laughs> um, the issue of illegals, we had that uh, with the um, in-state tuition. I believe people should follow the law when they come to this country. That's why we are the country that we are, and we are, we are making a law saying it's okay to break the law. So the issue of driver's license, the issue of in-state tuition, we have rigorously opposed that. We took it to referendum. We did not succeed. We worked very hard on that referendum, as did many, many people in this room. We appreciate that. And it's mind-boggling to me that that did not succeed. Um, so we are opposed to it, but Maryland is moving right straight forward, is right checks. So I'm, I'm opposed to it. The issue of, of the bathroom bill, the transgender bill, that came through my committee. Um, unfortunately, I think every transgender in the state of Maryland came and testified. I personally, and I'm, I'm not saying this to be not nice, but uh, they have some mental health issues. They need prayers. Uh, they do not need to have um, potty parity. And they, they want to be treated as that's normal and that's not. And I don't think we're doing them a service to allow it. So we voted against it. We fought against it. It does not apply to schools which is a good thing, but it does apply to our athletic clubs and our dressing rooms and it applies to all a public all other public accommodations other than other than our schools. So we fought hard against that. Any other questions? Just want to mention I'd hand out the little cards. Please feel free to call me, look on my website, email me. Uh, we are available to help with 
many, many things, whether it's a road issue, any questions that you have, if, if you think something's wrong and we're not doing something right, pick up the phone and call us. I'd rather you pick up the phone and call us than, than complain and say, what did they do and why did they do this? Because it's hard to, it's hard for us to explain it all. I have an email that I send out, I try to do it every couple weeks, to yes. give you our side of the, uh, yes, she puts it up. Because if we're, we, Delia Stocksdale, Delia, all of us do it, we're trying to give you our side of the, versus the newspaper. Yeah, this is what we think about an issue, versus reading it in the newspaper, so it's our opinion. Sandy. Um, Bathroom bill on the ballot. Well, this is a question. Delia Parrott, who did the other um, MarylandPetitions.com, he's asking people about putting the bathroom bill on the ballot. And I have wrestled with this. I believe the way that they spin this thing is about discrimination. And they have a really good spin, and they've got the press on their side. And I don't know that we'd be successful. We've already lost three ballot initiatives that I think were really good issues. And the way that they spin this and having the press spin it their way I think we would have a difficult time. I, I, if I thought we'd be successful, I would say do it. I don't know that we will. If we, we lost the marriage issue, to me that was, I mean, I... And the, and the in state tuition. And the in state tuition. I mean, we've lost all three ballot initiatives, and it's a lot of work. I don't know that we'll be successful because we do, like I said, we don't have the press on our side. Yes, sir. How did an issue that seemingly did set to some recession for the further study come up with a both very vocal minority and get passed. What's that? The marijuana bill. Oh my gosh. The marijuana bill. And let me just mention, I didn't mention, the reason I'm a little tired, we just finished our 90-day session. I got home today. Delegate Stocks, I got home today. And we went till midnight last night. I went to bed at 2.30 and got up at 5.30. And it is exhausting. I mean, you talk about, you feel like you're beat up and thrown out. We feel like we're beat up and thrown out. When they did it this weekend on Saturday. We always do tough things on Saturday because the press doesn't show up a lot on Saturday. We had a bill that was a, a study, a task force study for the decriminalization of marijuana. Now there's people that want to legalize it all the way. And keep in mind, there are libertarians, we had Republicans voted for it. We had Republicans sponsor the bill. Um, so it is sort of a libertarian versus conservative versus liberal. And the libertarians and the liberals sort of get together on this. And then you have the sort of conservatives in the middle. Um, it was a task force bill. The Black Caucus got together Saturday morning before we got together. We had this task force on the floor. It was on the floor to be voted on. And they got together and they said that they thought it was discriminating because more African Americans get arrested for marijuana than whites. And they talked about how the University of Maryland kids smoke marijuana, they don't get arrested, but in the city they do. And I said, well, maybe we should solve that problem by arresting the kids at the University of Maryland. So, but um, they brought that bill out. The Speaker of the House didn't want it. The Chairman of the Committee didn't want it. But the Black Caucus is very powerful. They have a lot of votes. And the Speaker. Well, we have a Speaker of the House that was opposed to it. But he wanted to keep his seat. And he went along with the Black Caucus. And once that train goes down the track, we all fought it. I, I, if you have a chance to listen to the. Good question. But I, if you have a chance one day and you want to click on that bill, you can go online and listen to the debate on the floor. I was so proud of our Republicans in that debate. And there was a gentleman who's in the Black Caucus who's a preacher in Randallstown, and he stood up and told them they were wrong. He said, this is not right for our people. You are, And he, it was phenomenal. So there are a few sane people in the Black Caucus that realize that this does not help them, this hurts them. But if you have a chance, the floor debate and the, the arguments that were made from our side, I thought were tremendous. It doesn't matter. When that train goes down the track and you call the race card, it, they prevail. Yeah. Yes, sir. All right, Jay, you're the last question. We have to are already at 8 o'clock. I'd like to make uh, one comment on the use of marijuana that Many people do not understand and realize. And that is that even though the use of marijuana may be decriminalized in the state of Maryland, it is a federal offense. Yes, sir. And if a person uses marijuana, that is grounds for denying them the use of a firearm for the rest of their life. And his point about being federally, it is still federally illegal. The other thing is the way the bill is written, it is still illegal criminally to use the wrapping paper, the bowl, the bong, and the baggie to hold it in. So I guess you're just going to have to like put it in your hand or something because when they arrest you, you can't, you've can't. you got to somehow roll it up and the rolling paper is still considered paraphernalia and that's still criminally, 
Now, keep in mind, very few people get arrested and put in jail for marijuana. They keep talking about that. Usually there's another offense with it. Very few people get arrested criminally for marijuana. Yes, sir. The point there is that if something is decriminalized, it makes people think that it's okay to do it. Right. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Well, keep in mind, you say it's federal law, and you got to remember, guys, we have federal laws now, and guess what? Our president has said he's not going to enforce it, and this is one of them. We've got whole states that have legal marijuana. However, using it as a way to deny guns to people is something this administration would have to do. To do what? Using it as a means of denying firearms. Yes, he's mentioning using it as a means to deny firearms. That's a very good point. That is a very, very good point. I never made that connection. I think that's something, that's something we did not bring up the other day. I thank you for that. I thank you all. Please keep in touch. Keep in mind my whole district is now the whole county, so anybody wants to help out or rip with some signs up, we appreciate it. Thanks.